On this slide, we say R33 is 6 to be done in class. We did it. In fact, R3n is known exactly when n is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. You can look them up on the web and find the exact values. Just do a Google search for small Ramsey numbers. If you take the heading of this slide and type it in, you'll be taken to various web pages that have these values. R310 is not known exactly, but it's known to be one of three numbers, 40, 41, or 42. Those three bounds have been known for about 10 years. And for large n, it's now known that R3n is theta of n squared over log n. In other words, there's a constant where it's at least a constant times n squared over log n, and there's another constant where it's at most constant times n squared over log n. Question? It isn't even clear that it's in the class, because what is a certificate? Yeah, it's, it's much more subtle than that. All right, I said that R44 is known. It's known to be 18. This is a result done by Greenwood and Gleason. Gleason was a fascinating character. He got an undergraduate degree from Harvard and then got drawn up in World War II working on cryptography for the Navy. And then he went back to Harvard. He never got a graduate degree. But he became not only a professor at Harvard, he became quite famous one. Uh, he, later, he became the president of the American Mathematical Society with only a bachelor's degree. But he was clearly a very, very smart guy and, and did some really, really nice work. Question? Say that again. I guess like he got his graduate degree by working in the Navy during the war. No, he, he, he never got a graduate degree. He, he got the equivalent of it by publishing about 15 uh, spectacular papers, uh, some of which dealt with Hilbert's fifth problem. So he, he was quite famous. It didn't matter whether you have the formal degree or not. His uh, career path is a little bit tougher to follow these days. The number R44 is known exactly as 18. R55 is not known exactly. It's known to be in the range 43 to 49. The gap on R66 is somewhere between 102 and 165. Now, just think about what it would take for me to convince you that R66 is at, mo is at most 165. I would have to give you an argument that would explain why any graph which has 165 vertices has no it has at least a K6 or an I6. I could probably do that in a week. It's a lot of case analysis, but I could do that. But look at the other side. I'm saying it's at least 102. Now, in order to prove that, what I would give you is a graph with 101 vertices and ask you to verify that it has no K5 and no I5. Now, the graph I could give you on a piece of paper. You know, 101 vertices, uh, you know, 10,000 so edges. And it's going to have roughly about half the number of possible edges. So 100 times 100 minus 1 over 2 is like 100 times 50. So like 5,000. So it has in the vicinity of 2,500 edges. I could write those down on a, at least a couple of pieces of paper. So I give you the graph. Now, you have to prove, verify, that it has no K5 or K3. How hard would that be? I mean, no K5 and no I5. You would have to pick up the five element subsets one at a time and verify that there's no K5 or I5. What's 100 choose 5? How big is that? 100 times 99 times 98 times over 1 times 2 times 3. That's a big number. 
That's going to take you quite some time. Even with a computer. And what about R77 and R88 and R10? What about R100? In our course, I've often referenced a famous now deceased mathematician named Paul Erdős. Uh, Erdős learned about uh, Ramsey. In fact, he is one of the many people who rediscovered the theorem himself. Erdős uh, was often quoted as saying, if the fate of the world depended on finding the value of R55 and settling where in that range 43 to 49, if we turned all of the energy of the scientific communities all around the world, all of our computers, all our brains, we could probably do it in a year or two. But he said, no one will ever know R66. I was talking with a student in the class and telling this story again. And, and the student said, well, you know, the computers are going to get faster. Yes, they are. And maybe Erdős is wrong. Maybe we'll know R66, you know, some kind of DNA computer running at super, super speeds. But trust me, you build a bigger and faster machine, I'll just push the Ramsey number up a little bit, and you'll stay in the impossible category forever. They're just, they're just hard to do. So because they're hard to do, mathematicians want to estimate them. All right, now I list a theorem here. Uh, it's got two bounds. The symmetric Ramsey number RNN is at most some something, and then it at least some something. I could explain the lower bound to you in about a month. I first have to teach you about the Lovas local lemma. The upper bound would take a, a couple of years because you really, really, really have to know something to get the upper bound. Now, look at the big terms in these expressions. The big terms are the exponential terms involving two. The lower bound is of the form, roughly speaking, the big term in it is 2 to the n over 2. And the big term in the upper bound is 2 to the 2n. 